It's the WP Minute Plus, your home for long-form discussions with WordPress professionals and industry experts covering our favorite topic, WordPress. Be sure to follow us. Search for WP Minute in your favorite podcast app. Follow this podcast in our 5-Minute Weekly Edition or head to thewpminute.com slash subscribe and join our newsletter. I'm told it's like a warm WordPress blanket that gets delivered to your doorstep every week. Looking for all things WordPress? The WP Minute has you covered. Looking for a great way to support the WP Minute and rock some awesome WordPress swag? Check out our new thriving t-shirt. You can find it at thewpminute.com slash shop. That's thewpminute.com slash shop shop. It's a great way to show your support for the WP Minute and for WordPress and rock some really cool swag for the summertime. 20% of proceeds go to the WordPress Foundation. To keep WordPress thriving, check out the WPMinute.com slash shop. Imagine if Wix invested in open source. Imagine if Wix gained on WordPress. Imagine if Wix conquered our beloved CMS. Imagine if Wix focused on one area in WordPress, data liberation. I don't think the closed source CMS will supplant tens of thousands of WordPress professionals one-click installing WordPress for their clients anytime soon, even with their aggressive marketing tactics. With a whole section devoted to their open source initiatives documented at Wix.engineering, including a behind-the-scenes look at how they scale their platform for hundreds of thousands of users, it's obvious they know the importance of connecting with developers. So why not call the bluff? Matt Mullenweg just mentioned in his summer update at WordCamp Europe that the data liberation initiative isn't moving as fast as he'd hoped. He wants to unlock customer website content and other data proprietary CMSs like Wix hold hostage from their users if they decide to migrate away. What an amazing opportunity for Wix and others to take part in for the greater good of WordPress, open source, and all users of the web. I agree with one of Kevin Geary's points. I don't believe there's a master plan coming from the sidelines at Wix. They are a product and profit first company. Their core product is an open source. Automatic, on the other hand, started with air quotes with an open source product and is now trying to build the profit first part of their business. More of that in my last post. What would we do with the keys to the kingdom? Open source winning doesn't mean that WordPress wins at every single front. It shouldn't. It can't really. We've lost the plot if we think that our goal is to build a defense against these other CMS platforms. Instead of devising a timeline where WordPress must win at all costs, we should be advocating and demonstrating the WordPress way to these commercial entities. Look, I don't think it's an easy task, but if anyone from Wix is listening, spending a few hundred thousand in engineering time could create a plugin that syncs data to and from a WordPress install. It's probably money well spent, much more than sponsoring a YouTuber. In the end of the day, users win, which is the ultimate goal. And the optimist in me hopes that the more proprietary brands see the value in this type of portability, data liberation, the more they might be enticed to go deeper, investing in other parts of open source. Heck, imagine if you could install the Gravity Forms plugin on your WordPress site and a Wix site. What a world that would be. But I'm not foolish. I know these are epic challenges and largely not part of the mainstream software's agenda or automatics for that matter. I also know the idea of wanting other platforms to look more attractive for developers means that WordPress could certainly look less appealing through the same lens. There's a model here that we've halfway unearthed. It's worked for 21 years. Instead of the goal to have WordPress installed everywhere, maybe it's the impression of our community that should be spread first. Don't laugh. I can hear you. Do we need to be more than 50% of the web? Can Wix and others have their share so long as they become good stewards of open source? My fear isn't that the other platforms will conquer WordPress, but that open source WordPress in collaboration with Automatic can't move fast enough to find its footing. Loose terrain, not just built on the rough edges of UI and UX decisions, but the lack of deep bonds threaded throughout the community, the stuff that gets challenged every day. More transparency from leadership, automatic truly investing in partnerships with us, and community members treating everyone with respect and integrity across the board. Finally, a problem AI can't solve, WordPress thriving because of humans. In the battle for a dominant CMS, it's hard to pick a winner or a loser because the real fight 
should be for more choice everywhere. So as I spoke about at State of the Word, I'll reintroduce State Deliberation. This is the idea that one of the best things we could do as an open source community is unlock all the proprietary platforms, all the places where people have their data locked in to systems which might not allow export or easy composability or transferability of their data. Um, so we, we term this data liberation. And uh, if you scan that QR code or go to wordpress.org slash data dash liberation, you will see we have the start <laughs> of what uh, hopefully will be something that creates a ton more freedom on the web and a ton more portability between platforms, including in and out of WordPress. WordPress could be a, maybe a middle ground between something else. Um, however, this has had very, very little progress. <laughs> so if you go to that page, click on some of the links. You'll see mostly empty GitHub repos. So I just wanted to point this out as an amazing place, if you're interested in contributing to WordPress, uh, to adopt something and have total ownership of it. So if you wanted to sort of, each of these projects is fairly self-contained. So if uh, you want a chance to actually lead something within the WordPress project, you could be in charge of the, say, Wix to WordPress converter or something like that. Um, this, I think, is also going to be really important for us as the more and more marketing dollars, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars are spent in marketing for proprietary platforms, proprietary platforms have gotten tons of investment in the past few years, things like Shopify, Squarespace, et cetera. And they are coming as sort of the macroeconomic conditions have changed. They've started to really target WordPress agencies, WordPress users, WordPress sites quite a bit. And so they're coming and trying to snipe away our community. Um, so we have to <laughs> keep an eye out for that. And the problem as well is when people go that way, it's almost impossible to go back the other way. It's like, uh, I don't know if you had this advertisement here, but the Roach Motel, the roaches check in, they don't check out. That's a lot of these proprietary CMSs. They let you check in your data, but you can never check it out. So if part of our mission to democratize the web and increase freedom, I think it's really, really important that we create portability, even when the platforms themselves try not to allow it. That's it for today's episode. Get the weekly newsletter at thewpminute.com slash subscribe. Want to support the show and join a Slack group filled with WordPress professionals like you? Talk about the news, share your WordPress business content, and network with others. Head to thewpminute.com slash support and get access to our group. Support the show for as little as $5 or more if you feel we provided more value. Thanks to our pillar sponsors, Pressable, Bluehost, and Omnisend. Thanks to our Foundation Plus sponsors, WP World, Image SEO, and Hostinger. Thanks to all of our annual supporting members and you, the listener. Without your support, the WP Minute wouldn't be possible. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.